This is pretty exciting to be here for our uh, 50th reunion. Go Viking, right? This is great. I'll do some admin things first. Uh, we got champagne with light hors d'oeuvres there. The food, main food, entrees come out about uh, 7, 7.30. Be all around the, the uh, rooms here. Uh, we want to thank uh, Jerry Sexton for the videos that are going on tonight and a lot of his work. Uh, we have uh, Ken Rothaker providing the music in the background for us right now until about 7.30. And then after that, we're going to play your favorite tunes, the Billboard Top 100 Hits from 1972. Yeah. And I, and I guarantee the music will impress you one way or the other, but it's our music. So you, when you hear your song, you'll go, okay, we, we made it popular. Yes. And, and there's a photo booth uh, that uh, Jan and Lynn put together uh, over there, so please utilize that. At uh, 7, 7.30, Mr. Spolsky and Mr. Reynolds will show up and we'll have uh, speeches from those two and also Bill Prescott and uh, Cookie Jones will have quick speeches between 8 and 8.05. They said that they'll be brief. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. Thank you. Hey, she's, she's always concise and to the point. Um, and yeah. I had the uh, luxury of uh, visiting with Mr. Reynolds uh, two days ago, and he's as uh, healthy as he's been in a couple weeks. Feels uh, pretty good with energy, uh, but he's still pretty fragile, and he's holding a wheelchair. And when we bring him in, we'll uh, kind of make an announcement. And we want to shower him with love, but we don't want to smother him with love. So, <laughs> you know, show him all the love you want, but uh, we have to be gentle. Uh, I want to thank uh, Marty Griggs for his donation. He contributed the money for the bubbly. So thank you, Marty Griggs, for that. And we had other people make donations as well, which Cookie will toast. I didn't uh, introduce myself, I'm uh, Jim Rose. Uh, I was a senior class vice president, and had I known uh, 52 years ago that this would be my, uh, I'd get stuck with, do I mean, have the privilege of doing a reunion, <laughs> I might not have run for the office. But it's really been a privilege to uh, get to know everybody again and uh, get this group together. It's been a fabulous uh, couple days. And uh, thank you all for your cooperation with getting the License numbers, date of births, and all that kind of stuff. I know it's a hassle, but we all got through the gate uh, pretty smoothly. And now that we have all your numbers, I just, I guess I could say that uh, thank you for that. Your bank accounts have been uh, empty, <laughs> and we have a private jet waiting for us outside. So have a good time. Yeah, just, just and uh, so we, we had a nice group uh, working together, a uh, core group of people. We had, uh, and Cookie will talk more of them later. But we have uh, Jan uh, Johnson, uh, Clement Schaefer, 74, uh, Lynn Worley Olson, 73, uh, Bill Prescott, President, 73, okay. um, Jerry Sexton did yeoman's work for us, uh, 72, uh, Colette Child Mendelson did uh, so much work for us as well. And then, of course, uh, we have Cookie. We knew when uh, we voted her into office that she was the uh, smart, intelligent, Full of energy gal, and uh, 50 years later, here she is, as smart as intelligent ever. And I tell you what, this girl would beat the bushes high and low to find graduates uh, and hire people to find graduates. And anyway, if there's a graduate out there that uh, they, they just don't want to be found because she was doing work to, to make all that work. Thank you, Jim. Um, so here we are for our 50th. We all made it uh, and looking good. We uh, had our a really nice school tour yesterday, Mr. Spolsky, wow. totally impressive. I mean, there's so much energy and positive direction in that school, you just can't believe it. And so as good as that is, I would just like to say 50 years ago, we got the school started and we got it going in the right direction. And we put the rudder in the water of the Viking ship. You know, yes. we got it going in the right direction. All right. You know? Yeah. And, 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 and Mr. Reynolds will uh, attest to that. He said a lot of schools uh, drift the first couple years, but we didn't. You know, we got on that uh, course and, and uh, rode it. So uh, well done to all that. So let's get this uh, party started with a, a champagne toast. And I'd like to acknowledge uh, first our uh, fellow Vikings who are no longer with us. I'd like to acknowledge our fellow Vikings who uh, 
could not make it due to illness or illness in family. And then we want to acknowledge all of you who put the fresh footsteps in the sand of Fort Walton Beach High School. So right. uh, here's to old friends and new memories. Cheers. Cheers. First of all, I'm Rosalind Gillis, AKA Cookie, jo AKA Cookie Jones. You're 1972 class president of the first graduating class of Fort Walton Beach High School. Here we all are, finally, here we are. Who would be even believe that we're celebrating our 50th reunion? It feels like yesterday when we walked across the stage and received our diplomas. See, I thought I'd walk into this room tonight and be the youngest looking person here, but it's Bill Prescott. Where is he? <laughs> Always Bill. Although I no longer live in Fort Walton Beach, it's still home to me. As I welcome all of you, 1973, 1974, and 1975 classmates. Our faculty. Welcome to our faculty. Welcome to Mr. Spolsky, our current principal of Fort Walton Beach High School. I'm very proud you're here. I'm proud you're here. And of course, Mr. C.F. Reynolds. Can I get a standing ovation? Mr. Reynolds? Come on, everybody get up. What a great honor, and certainly it's a milestone. I think we grew up in a less complicated world when a cell phone meant you were calling from jail. <laughs> when the net we used to play, it was volleyball, not the net that we have now. We had a princess phone with a super long cord that we could take to our bedrooms for some privacy. I miss those days when we re really respected one another and we, when we addressed our teachers and administrators, we said Mr. and Mrs. And most of all, we accepted each other's differences without judgment. I certainly miss those days. And I, I really want to tell everybody here that there's a commonality here. We're military families. There's a faction of us that's very important. I, I couldn't leave this room without thanking our military, our United States Air Force. How about our United States Navy? How about our United States Army? Ah, we got some Army people here. How about our Marine Corps? How about our Coast Guard? And now a newly formed Space Force. I want to thank our parents. They had the foresight and the wisdom to raise us in this beautiful and vibrant community while affording us the opportunity to be students at Fort Walton Beach High School, the proud home of the Vikings. I think Mr. Spolsky said some of this, but I'm gonna bring that in. But Fort Walton Beach High School was and still is committed to education, educating the whole student in academics, fine arts, athletics, and community service. We are proud. We are true, and we're the class of 72. I'm very humbled by the accomplishments and achievements of this graduating class. I'd be remiss if I didn't take this opportunity to personally thank all the classmates and faculty who put in several hours, days, and uh, now it's about a year and a, almost a year and a half to get this reunion here. 
contacting everybody, searching for everybody, just to make sure that no one was left out. Okay, where are you, Jim? <laughs> Jim Rose. You are the ultimate pilot. I called him my pilot the whole time because he piloted us through, but he has been the wind beneath my wings. He called me in January, and I was spacing. I didn't realize, but you know, that's a blonde thing. I didn't realize that we had a 50-year reunion coming. And uh, he said, we need a reunion. And I said, yeah, we do. He immediately put up a Facebook page. He started a progression towards finding classmates. You met me in Fort Walton Beach to survey venues, and we found one, this venue. Thank you, Jim. You took it upon yourself. You took it upon yourself to put a great menu together. One of the hugest tasks was vetting all of our classmates to enter the space, and so much more. We love the music you chose for tonight, and I thank you with all my heart and soul. And I thank your wife. <laughs> because she knew. She went all along on this ride with us, which has been wonderful. Jerry Sexton, where are you? Where are you, Jerry? Oh, I know what you're doing over there. Now I remember. Jerry Sexton, our communications director. The AV man, the Zoom Zoom creator. Zoom, we were communicating by Zoom many times. And I learned Google Docs again. I didn't know it. I don't think I ever learned it. But I learned Google Docs, thanks to him. But the biggest task was for him to take the several hundred pictures that you're seeing on the wall. Let me tell you a story about those pictures. He could probably tell you better. Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, this was our photographer in high school. As a hobby, he also did it as a career. He took those pictures. Some of them got burned in a fire. He cleaned them all up, and you're looking at them now. 52, 53 years later, right? About 53 years later. And we still have those memories. Thank you so much, Jerry. Really, thank you with all my heart. Okay, where's Colette? My, my cor where's my Corvette buddy? Where is she? There's, cor there's Colette. We started out as friends, late night friends. We talk on the phone forever. I like her little red Corvette, but she traded it in for a blue one. So I can't sing that song to you anymore. She's my line dancing partner and was our special, and is still, our, our PR director. How did I ever find anything, remember anything, write anything, because you did the work for me? I thank you for keeping me in line and holding my hand to this very night. Gee whiz, we almost talked every day, every night, and all the time. Jan and Lynn, where's Jan and Lynn? Oh, they're over there. Jan and Lynn. That would be my hometown girls. My hometown girls that took care of everything here because we did all of this from a distance. You really did, really, really you did everything to get us to this point. I don't know if you know that, but you did. You did everything to get us here. Your ideas, your experience from working at the high school, your planning, the abilities of calling everyone you knew, the decoration of this room. Hello. But the name tags, oh my goodness, those name tags. I'm sorry, Lynn, I didn't really get all the maiden names and I didn't get all the correct names, but Lynn, we finally got those names, didn't we? We were looking for who's who, who married who, whose name matched the yearbook name. What a challenge. Thank you for getting the Viking ship here and putting up with me. I want to tell a little story about the Viking ship. I think you all noticed it when you came in tonight. Everybody knows that ship? 
Everyone noticed it, right? Yes. So, Jan, can you please come up here? We're gonna, I'm gonna try to do this without having a few tears, but it's happy tears. We talked about the Viking ship. We posted it on the Facebook page. We talked about Rick, his blessed memory. And I was watching a program one night, late at night. It was like on the Discovery Channel or something like that, and they were talking about Viking ships that were discovered in the ocean. I got up the next morning and I called her. I said, I've had the strangest dream. It was Rick's 16th anniversary of his passing. How would have I known that? I didn't know. I mean, I didn't. I didn't know her last year until I knew her this year and the year before. <laughs> and um, I said, there's something about that Viking ship. Got to have that Viking ship around. He built it. He gave it to the school in 1999. Is that correct? Yes, for my daughter's uh, graduation gift that she uh, and her class wanted to give to the school. So how would I know? But she knows when I want something, Jim knows it too, and so does Jerry. When we girls want something, <laughs> we know how to get it. So what, if, what happened? Her son and her son-in-law drove it in here on the base. I said, the well, base not going to let you bring that in here. I know base not going to let you bring it in here. And sure enough, oh, yeah. <laughs> it's parked there. So in the blessed memory of Rick and all of the Clements family, I want to say thank you so much. Thank you for making sure it was here. I'm so glad it was here. And we should always know what a good man he was. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I also want to thank about 100 or more classmates. How much time do we have? I'm not going to do it. <laughs> Those classmates search for people. They volunteered to make this happen tonight. We had a lot of sponsors, a lot of good sponsors that helped make this happen. Speaking of names and how difficult and sad to find names of our fallen Vikings, I want to mention Valhalla and those classmates who have spent several years, not the little bit of time that I've spent, but several years on the Facebook site to help their memories be alive. I want to thank Sandy Taylor, Gwen Green Lonnecker, Cindy Robin Lamasters, and Cheryl Thompson. Could we please have a moment of silence for those who are no longer with us? Once again, Thank you. I'm grateful. This is a, 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 an event. Yes. I know she is. I mentioned her name. Yeah. Thank you. I'm, I'm grateful that we can make this a memori memori memorable event. I'd like to introduce now Bill Cres Prescott your 1973 class president. He's going to share a few words with us. How are you doing? Thank you. Hey, uh, Dr. Susie Jans reminded me that today is Sylvia Ruiz's birthday. Oh, oh happy birthday. Yeah, she's a special girl. Well, just a few words. I love reunions, and uh, I love people's stories, and I love getting to know people. A few years ago, uh, one of those reunions, I sat next to a young lady named Karen Hurlbert, and afterwards I was like, man, I wished I knew you in high school. But, you know, we're running around in different groups and activities and stuff, and, and then to know Ronnie, her husband, and they live over in Panama City. So I just enjoy getting to see you guys and know you, even though we're, it's been a long time. Uh, I'm just fascinated with people. I love seeing, uh, talking about your family, your grandkids, nieces, nephews, and all those things that are your legacy, you still have a part in. 
I, I got a late start, so I'm still kind of just getting some grandkids in there. But um, we want to, it's just been fun. It's been good to see you guys, everybody here. And on behalf of the class of 73, we have a present for Mr. Reynolds as well. And a special thanks goes to Lynn Worley for doing all this. Lynn, it's in a box. I don't want to take a, it is a, a really cool, it's a really cool Viking clock. And she has a picture of it that'll put on. We'll put on the face on the Facebook thing. Okay. Yeah. God bless. And and there's our best teacher right here. Right. Yeah. That's right. Thank you, Bill. Sandy, could you please come up? This is the Destin connection here. I took it out of the box. <laughs> this is from the class of 1972. Thank you, Sandy. Thank you, Sandy. You're welcome. It's pretty cool. 50 years. Sandy Design. Now let's get to the good part. There's a very special man sitting in this room besides this. I can't thank you enough for how you received Jim and I. When was that? Back in February? February. And how we walked in and he said, yeah, we can do that. No, we're going to do this. Let me call this person. Let me get that other person. He went as they were there. So we're going to do this at the football game. We're going to do this. And we're going to do that. And we're going to do that. Okay, we left there saying, I like this guy. You know, he had some big shoes to fill, but he filled those shoes. So he grew up in Orlando. He was the oldest of three boys. He attended UCF. Then he moved to Pensacola in 1990. He graduated with a cellular and molecular biology degree, things that I don't know much about, <laughs> from the University of West Florida. They began teaching physics, that I did not pass, and chemistry in 94. In addition to teaching, he coached football and tennis, worked as an instructional technology coordinator, and then became an assistant principal. In 2006, he became the principal of Max Junior Brunner Junior Middle School after nine years instead of paddling the Spartans. He transitioned to Fort Walton Beach High School as the principal in 2015. He really enjoys working at the fort. I didn't know it's called that name, but that's a very good name for it. And it's a place where he says people treat each other like family week in and week out. We saw that. We saw that on Friday. We saw it. We saw what you have going on there. We like it. It's good. We, we approve. <laughs> Fifty-some years later. <laughs> on the weekends, he spends time with his three girls. And of course, his beautiful wife, Bridget, Elena, Laura, and his parents, Dr. John P. and Nancy C. Spolsky. And I said, tell me something interesting about yourself. He said, I like to fix things with tools, and I have an addiction for automobiles. In fact, I have the same car I drove in high school. <laughs> so I'm going to let Mr. Spolsky come up and introduce Mr. Reynolds. Good evening. How are you doing? I'm going to pretend I'm not at a pep rally, but I get going pretty hard. So uh, usually at a pep rally, I don't have three beers before I start, so... This could get interesting tonight. Uh, I absolutely love working in the Emerald Coast. Uh, I moved to Pensacola, as she said, and, and I've spent my whole teaching career, my whole educator career, administrative career in Okaloosa County. This is a gem, and you know it because you guys started it. Okay? You started it from coal and charcoal, and you polished it into this diamond. 
we have a diamond here in Fort Long Beach High School. There's no doubt. I also want to say, I, I, I totally embrace the military community. I was born in Fort Sill, Oklahoma. My dad was in the Army. And um, there's, a special, there's a special bond of brotherhood that goes on between Panama City and Pensacola, Tyndall to Pensacola NAS. What has happened to Herbert over the last 15, 20 years is absolutely amazing. This is the most deployed base. These women and these men go out, they protect us, and they protect those colors of this country. And they're absolutely amazing to hear on this base. I, um, I'm very blessed. You know, I'm an, honestly, I'm an average John. I just grind, I work hard. I, I, um, I was blessed to teach a little bit of science. My mom was a teacher at Richmond, Virginia, while my dad went to dental school. And um, I, I called my dad from a payphone. I said, Dad, I think I'm going to be a teacher. And he said, talk to your mother. <laughs> and I said, Dad, I love it. He goes, and you go do it. And he knew because he had instilled those values of hard work, of dedication, of grit and grind. The only reason, the only reason I'm an assistant principal, a principal, an administrator, whatever you want to call it, is because of that woman right there, Bridget Spolsky. She, she said, John, I know you love teaching, but you could do so much more. And I said, I'm, I'm gonna teach chemistry and physics, biology the rest of my life. And she said, no, you need to do more, you need to do more. And I said, what are you talking about? And I was raising a kid, we were coaching, we were doing the whole thing, and she sent me to school at night. And I went over here to OWCC, I started there, remember OWCC, right? started doing all the work, and then the next thing you know, I finished my uh, master's degree, and Mr. Bounds gave me an opportunity to step up, and I'm just blessed to be where I was at Choctaw as administrator, at Bruner as administrator, and then all of a sudden they said, do you want to take the keys of Fort Long Beach High School? And I said, whoo, whoo, Fort Long Beach High School. And I started thinking, there's Mr. Reynolds, that's, that's top shelf, right? Then there's Mr. Prime. Then there's Mr. Walton. You don't even you don't even talk to Mr. Walton, right? You don't even talk to him. Then there's Dr. Tibbetts. Then there's Charlene Kubia. I'm like, I don't know if I can do this. I'm not really sure. So I dug deep. I dug deep. And I started talking to people. I talked to all the teachers. I talked to all the staff. I had Buddy O'Neill. Buddy O'Neill came in my office. He's giving me a little bit of a, the Fort Walton spirits, the Valhalla, all the juice, right? All the juice, the things that aren't in a book anywhere. You gotta know the juice about Fort Walton. And then all of a sudden, I got in front of those Vikings and I went, this is where I'm supposed to be. And this is where I'm going to be. This is where I'm going to stay. I have a 10th grader, and I kind of use her as my blue chip. I use her as my blue chip because uh, Mr. Chambers, the superintendent, is constantly trying to get me to go down there. I said, Mr. Chambers, I can't go down there. I got a daughter. I said, I thought that daughter graduated from college. She's a senior at UCF, but I got another one. I'm not going anywhere, sir. And, they, and if you were in the tour yesterday, you know I love going to work. I don't like getting up early. I hate getting up early, okay? I'm going to be honest with you. But once I'm there at 6.10 in the morning to get them all in, honestly, I can go, she knows, I can go until 10, 11 at night. I love being there. It's my, it's my home. My wife supports that. My parents support that. And it's just the best place to be because those kids give you juice and you give them juice, and it's back and forth, and it's back and forth. And if you get stuck in a cubicle down at the district office, you don't have any net juice, and you sure don't have damn Viking juice. Are you following what I'm saying? I, I'm supposed to read a long bio on, on somebody that, honestly, I don't know if you have this. There's probably like four or five people that you try to emulate in your life, right? You meet these men, you meet these women, you meet these friends. Sometimes they're just somebody you meet at a subway at a bus stop at a restaurant and you go, man, I wish I was a little bit more like him or her. And, that, and that's the kind of person that Mr. Reynolds is. Okay? He, he came from a very, very simple, simple family. He told me about his dad sharecropping. And I don't know if he's going to tell you about it today. But he, he came in and he did some things groundbreaking. You guys followed his lead as the lead person at Fort Long Beach High School. 
72, 73, 74. Those are special groups. 75, right there too. 75, there too. Oh boy, I love it. You got back and forth. But what, what, I, what I knew I needed to do is to look at the values and the foundations that Mr. Reynolds and all the other principals set forth, and then how can we put some modern spins on that? And so I'm just honored to be at Fort Walton Beach High School. I'm honored to be in front of this group. Um, when you guys graduated, I was three. Okay? Now I will say, I will say, I had to throw that one in. This whole, this whole microphone beer thing is good. We might work on this in the background. I will say the car, the car that Cookie referred to, I bought in Orlando for $3,200. It was a 69 GTO. And I, over there in Marionette, off of Marionette, over in Fort Walton Beach, I have this little cocoon. It's like a shed, and I have a cover, and I have an air conditioner, and, and it's in there. And I take it out about twice a year and just, and just fire it up. And just like, chun, 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 chun. And it just, it's exhilarating. But I still drive that 69 GTO. I never drive before Long Beach High School. Okay. <laughs> if you've seen the way young people take care of their cars. But um, I, I, I drive that, and I think of my dad, and I think of the 60s, and I think of the 70s, and I absolutely love those time periods. So I'm at the right place. And the ironic thing, I'll leave this before I bring up Mr. Reynolds. My dad, my dad gave me, when I was 10 years old, so 1979, my dad gave me a Hallmark plaque. And the plaque said on it, it was, had a little quote, try not to become a man of, of success, but rather a man of value. And I walk into Fort Walton Beach High School, and on the front sign, in those big old fashioned gas station block letters, you know what it says, where every student is known and valued. And that's what we try to do in Fort Walton Beach High School. Go Mikes! It is, it is my honor, it is my privilege to introduce, as you all know, Mr. C.F. Was uh, 
uh, with their studies, uh, it was decided that they would go in sort of a uh, modern direction, and the school was named by the school board uh, in about 1968, and it was called Vanguard Triplex. And the triplex had to do with the fact that they wanted three distinct different grade student uh, uh, for uh, uh, anyway, but juniors and seniors, uh, sophomores and freshmen, and seventh and eighth graders. And if you remember, there were three libraries constructed in the school. A lot of these things had gotten so far into the planning that they couldn't change them. And uh, so if you remember the uh, study carols that were around the wall uh, by the big library and then for the two smaller ones. And uh, anyway, uh, long story short, in late 1968, Mr. Wakin decided he wanted to go in a different direction. And uh, so I was summoned to the superintendent's office and uh, told that I had a new assignment. And I said, oh. And they said, you're going to be principal of Fort Walton, or a Vanguard Triplex. And it was still called that. It would be for several more months. But uh, anyway, uh, I, uh, I had the degree. And I guess it was sort of by default that I was actually placed there. And I had been the assistant principal for the previous three years at uh, Choctahatchee High School. And that was when we opened on Racetrack Road where the building still operates. But anyway, uh, I uh, was very apprehensive. I was nervous. I was insecure. Because even though I had three years of administrative experience, I felt somewhat uh, 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 ill-prepared. But anyway, uh, went ahead, did it, and I was given, uh, I was released from my assistant principal's duties in January, and I was able to use that full semester from January through the end of the year and all in to the summer uh, to plan for the opening of the new school. Over the course of that time, the Chamber of Commerce uh, approached the school board and said, look, what is this Vanguard Triplex? What does that mean when you know the school goes somewhere? Uh, it doesn't even show the name of the town. And you know the, 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 the high school, Choctahatchee, didn't reflect the name of the town. So anyway, uh, they petitioned the board and uh, quickly got them to change it from uh, Vanguard Triplex to uh, Fort Walton Beach High School. Yeah. Yeah. One of the many things that had to be done from hiring a complete faculty getting textbooks and materials and you name it. And I remember it, most of it well, but it's uh, some of those memories that you kind of will forget because it was a monumental task to get it ready. We started the school in uh, January, I mean, February the 3rd of 1969. We broke ground and this construction started and Actually, on August, excuse me, uh, November the 3rd of 1969, we first occupied the school. Uh, for the months of September and October, you remember well, we shared the Choctahatchee High School. And you, they, they used the building in the morning, we had it in the afternoon. But anyway, over the course of that time, it was necessary to uh, focus on some of the extracurriculars, and a, a decision was made 
by the uh, football coach Chester Norris and uh, that he would like to play a varsity schedule uh, that first year. And when I see people like Jim Rose and Ricky Whitfield and you name them, uh, they play a season, you know, with, with sophomores being the top class, they play uh, a varsity schedule. Yes, smaller schools, but they still won three football games. <laughs> so it set the tone for years to come with the successes of the, of the football. Mr. Epson was brought in as band director, and it was amazing what he and uh, uh, that band and those band parents were able to do to put on the field uh, uh, a marching band that was uh, that was very good and uh, and got better and by the third year they were right there with the best of the best and uh, I say all of that to just say this sometimes we're accused of overemphasizing the uh, peripheral things like athletic teams and like fans, but I can tell you this, that those programs were, were able to shine a light on the parts of the school that the parents really didn't see. You didn't see report cards, you didn't see other things, but they were able to see what that was doing, and I think they clearly recognized the importance of it, and, and uh, it, it was very, very important to the development of that school. And some of those successes, without a doubt, in my mind, uh, laid the foundation for the school uh, coming along and being as highly recognized as it was in a short period of time. But I could go on and on, but I know you have other things you'd rather do. <laughs> well then, the mascot of the school, we have uh, sort of a contest with WNUE radio station. And we, uh, at the time we got around to naming the school, it was time to, uh, uh, we still were called Van Carter Triplex. And so the idea of a, of a school mascot uh, was, was not an easy one, but uh, so we got a contest. And uh, if I remember correctly, uh, uh, Jeff uh, Harrison, what's her name? Marty. Marty submitted the, uh, the, the winning name, and, and at that time, uh, it was decided. Uh, the Vikings would be uh, a nice ring with the alliteration Vanguard Vikings. So that had more to do with the uh, choice of that particular mascot. And then, of course, the school colors were decided, and all the other trappings of getting a good, uh, you know, program together. And so there we were. Then a month or so later, the school name was changed. And, uh, but it was too late. We already had school uniforms, football uniforms ordered, and so we pressed on. And so it is today uh, for Walton Beach Vikings. Uh, it has served us well, and uh, uh, I think the uh, students who attend school there and then graduate, they leave with a sense of pride and, uh, and it's all been good. But anyway, uh, so many things happened and uh, as I said, we had to, we had to adjust to uh, a double session schedule and uh, put it, uh, you know, with, with the perseverance that you young folks had at that time, and you uh, stayed the course, and it all worked out uh, 
uh, there with. And then, of course, we had that very first graduating class in 1972. And that was the highlight of my career, was standing on that stage and handing out the diplomas uh, to those that uh, were the first to, to come across there. I could go on and on, and I do hope that the good Lord will allow me to maintain uh, some good bit of my memory because I spend uh, a lot of hours uh, recalling and uh, the names of the students and many of the teachers and many of them, of course, have gone on because of the time. But uh, it, uh, I've had such such good memories and uh, uh, I could, uh, like I said, I, I enjoy just reminiscing in, in my own mind and uh, recalling those. Uh, I, I can still see them now as they walked in there that very first day of school uh, as 15 year old 10th graders. And then, uh, and then to see them, you know, the parking lot was easy. Uh, we didn't have anybody driving. <laughs> go by there now and try to find a parking place. And you'll see what I'm talking about. But anyway, it, it was the uh, highlight of my life. Uh, I was there for 16 years. And after uh, 16 years, I uh, was asked to uh, transition from that job to deputy superintendent, and I did. And so most of my career, naturally, then was in school administration. But it gave me uh, more than ample opportunities to interact with students, uh, not just the ones that I would teach if I had been a teacher, but all the students. And one of the, and I thoroughly enjoyed. Uh, interacting with students one-on-one -on -one. and uh, I, uh, every day as the bell would ring I would try to get into the hallways and see students and I, I learned most of their names and they see certainly appreciate being able uh, being called by their name. I apologize for the uh, raspiness but I've enjoyed myself came out here early, I saw so many people, one-on-one, -on -one, and I will cherish this for whatever days, you know, the Lord has left for me. Thank you, Thank you so much.